Hello YouTube, Ken Hayao here with another Black Desert Online video for you. And today we're going to be talking about the Archer class. And I've been playing the Archer since the season server came out here in Korea on, on March 18th. So I had a lot of experience playing the class for the last month and a half or so, whatever day today is month, I guess for a month, last month. Uh, I want to go ahead and share my experiences, my opinions on what I think the class is, how it plays, and, and show you how I, what skills I use to grind and how I recommend that you grind and try to show you some of the tricks that I found. Uh, one thing that I did not like when playing the Archer for the past month was that he jumps around a lot. Most of the time you're going to be spending doing uh, acrobatics and, and not attacking as much and a lot of the skills actually move him away from the target which if you don't position yourself correctly in the field when grinding you're actually going to be delaying and slowing down your grinding a lot because you're going to be as you attack the mobs in front of you you're actually going to be pushed back and get even farther away from the next group so uh, so positioning is quite important when grinding with your archer class so keep that in mind uh, if you don't like to keep an eye on, on the field and where you are when grinding if you're just on a mindless grind it might take a while to incorporate that style of play uh, into your play style now i'm not going to go over all the archer skills i'm just going to go over the skills i chose uh, i might mention a skill or two uh, that are optional that you may want to choose that i didn't choose uh, but i'm not going to go over every single skill you can easily go to BDO Codex and uh, check all the skills yourself. But this is more to tell you which skills I use and which skills add-ons I took uh, and how to combine them uh, to grind efficiently. All right, so let's take a look here at uh, the Archer. So as you might know, there's no, there's not going to be a succession tree for the Archer. It's only a regular tree and your awakening. Let's start here by going over the pre-awakening skills and most of them are not going to be used for them really uh you take this one here let me see so you're this is a little buff and this in english is called breath of spirit i believe and then you, you can take a breath recover this is the only really good one out of these the other ones are debuffs and i'm not you're not going to debuff anybody while grinding and again this is a pve build not a pvp build as you might have seen from the title all right so take that and the way this skill works is you hit your two to prepare and you're gonna see that he's holding the ball there and then you hit left and you activate the buff and there you go and this skill is also a heal so if you do this and hit left you're gonna heal your allies this one you can choose if you want uh i believe this is called ensnare uh, you have to put this on your on your slot on your hot bar and you use it and you can see that the reason why I'm suggesting is because you get a 30% crit buff. Uh, what this skill does is actually pulls the enemies closer after you turn them and pull them closer. So uh, it's not terrible. The problem is I haven't found any, a, a way to cancel the animation. If, if there's a way to cancel the, the animation or if there is a way to cancel the, the animation and you know, you can let us know down below. So if I could get that just for the buff, because I don't really care about the pull because the pull, the range of the pull is pretty short. I believe even from here, you don't, it doesn't work. So, you have to pretty much be already in melee range for it to work. Yeah, from here. So, I don't know. Doesn't seem like a very useful skill. Just for the, you know, like I said, the, the crit chance is interesting. If you can, if you can make it work for 9 seconds. But as we, as we will see when we get to the awakening skills, most of the awakening skills already have a pretty high crit chance anyways. So, although it may look interesting at first, uh, in, in the end it's not going to be very useful. This one here is your space bar, which you can use it right after any other attacks. Doesn't matter what attack you use, if you do this, you can use space bar. If you do this, you can use space bar. Any, pretty much after any attack. But yeah, so that's a... Uh, that's a, you definitely should max out this skill because it's uh, it's good to chain between skills and cancel some animations. And the other reason why this, this space bar skill is important is because you allow you to cancel another skill if you want uh, for, for a very nice buff, which is not this one. I don't know why I have this skill. So it's good because it's your, your left and right click. Uh, yeah, sorry, your, your A and D and, and left click and right click. It does actually do some damage and you can use these. This is grinding while you're grinding uh, in the beginning up to maybe 58, 56, 50. It depends, depends on your gear, of course, on uh, your damage will be higher, but it works both in pre-awakening and awakening. So it's not a bad skill to take. Uh, and then there's other skill here. This is a very important skill. This is actually a buff. You can see here, well, it's in Korean, so maybe you can't see. The space bar skill is called Meteor Dive. I forgot to mention that. So Meteor Dive, you want to max. And then coming here to Wrath of Nature. You definitely want to get the absolute version because it will give you a 12 ranged AP buff 
for 10 seconds every time you use it and the skill cooldown is shorter than that so you can keep the buff up at all times if you're better at uh paying attention right, the skill cooldown is eight seconds and the buff lasts 10 but if you pay attention you're always going to have the ranged uh, ap bonus and uh, as you can maybe you might be able to notice here i actually put some skill add-ons on this skill and i got eight seconds of 25 ap monster ap and a i put an armor buff in there because it's 10 second armor buff because dp buff because i didn't think i don't think there was anything uh better but yeah so the way this skill works this is a shift q and the way i do it usually this actually is i start with the jump space bar and then shift q and then i cancel with another jump and now i'm here and i can start attacking this group here i don't know if you're able to see but it's on, it's on cooldown now and this is a buff 12 ap and if you don't cancel kind of a long animation uh it, it does all right damage but uh no the damage is not what you're after here. Five, five hundred, five thousand percent. No, five hits of one thousand forty-seven percent. Uh, it's not terrible, but I mostly use it for the the buff, and you can cancel right after you hit, and you can see that you automatically get uh, or immediately you get uh, twelve ranged AP buff. But yeah, so these skills, meteor dive and wrath of nature, pair well together because you can cancel, uh, and this will give you the buff. Like I said. So I think, let me double check here, but I think that's it for your pre-awakening skills. And of course, you want to get your passives. If you're just going to do PvE, you don't necessarily need the, the health. Although the 2% accuracy at the last one here is pretty good. And you shouldn't be, you know, if you're going to grind in probably forest or Tisha ruins or Gahas, you shouldn't really be having any problems with your SP. So just go ahead and maybe grab this last. Grab this one first and then uh, grab this, but definitely grab all your passives. It's not really a expensive class to get the, all the skills you can see here. I'm at 1,340 SP, which is not a lot at all. And I already got all the skills that I want or need. Now we can go and move on to your awakening skills. And I got, uh, I guess, most of them. Here's what I, here's what I got. Of course, you want to get your, your buff over here. It gives you 30 seconds of on attack, air attack, and back attack. 15% extra damage. You get a crit chance of 100%. You get crit damage plus 15%. And of course, you have super armor while you're using this uh, one of the cool things about this uh this buff here is that you actually if you if you use this skill uh, two of the charged skills which are down here you can see there's an animation charge there this one and especially this one has a very long anime a very long charge you can use those without charging let me let me show you here so the first one is your shift and right click you can see there's a charge and then of course you can hold until you're, you're, you know, you're finished aiming and let it go. And the other one, you see, these charges one, two, three bars. I guess a similar amount of charge. I guess this is consuming my stamina as I hold. And then you can hit the left click and it releases. But then if you use your awakening buff, or your Q buff, you can do this. And now you can use... It goes out and you can use this one. You can see immediately cast. The problem with using this skill this way is that you cannot hold. You don't longer have the precision of being able to hold until you're ready to shoot. So that's that can be a problem for you. This one here is just a damage bonus. You can hold right click to kind of aim down sights while you're shooting arrows, and of course, you can use some skills while doing that. You actually get an AP buff when you use it. So even if you just want to use it for one skill, you can do something like right click and then jump like this. You can see here you get a 10 second uh, AP buff. So pretty cool. And you can see that uh, I also had another buff there, which we're going to talk about in a second here, which is from a skill add on, which is your first awakening skill here. This one in English is called Radiant Explosion. And you want to max this out as soon as possible. It puts a 15 DP debuff on them for 10 seconds. And you can also put the add on that I did, which uh, adds a 25 AP monster AP to your skills for eight seconds. And the skills on six second cooldown. So you can keep this up indefinitely. It also recovers some of my stamina. Uh, that's the other add on uh, buff that I chose this one, but that's only because I sure there was nothing else better that i could use here uh if there is an accuracy option i haven't chat don't remember uh you might want to put it here but i also have accuracy buff on another skill add-on uh but i also have a on, on this skill here which is pretty much your left click while you're walking around uh it will keep you it will give you accuracy three percent accuracy for 12 seconds and monster a 20 monster ap for eight seconds so you can always at the very least have 20 monster ap around if you're just uh using this skill to move around like this, you can see the buff goes up and it's always refreshing. So every now and then you tap your right click to get another 10 
AP and now you you got your 20 from here and your 10 from here now you got 30 AP so, so next one here is a shift Q which in English is called Spear of Sylvia so Spear of Sylvia is pretty good well it's, it's good I don't know if it's pretty good it's a heal so it'll pull the enemies and knock them down so there you go now they're near you the problem is the range is kind of short so you're gonna have to be on the enemy's face to hit them with it I normally use this as a heal I jump in, in, into the mobs and, and it's Use this so he gets some health back. The super armor prevents me from taking too much damage. Being CC'd or you know, getting killed while I'm trying to heal. But a lot of these other skills also heal and from a safer distance. So although I use this skill a lot in the beginning, I ended up forgetting about it as, as, the, as the more I played the archer. Uh, you want to be moving around so he doesn't even hit from here. You can still take it. I, like I said, I use it. It's not like it's a trash skill. Uh, you probably want to take most of your awakening skills anyways. Uh, next skill here is this, which is very useful. And you can actually, you're actually going to be using that a lot. And it is a charge skill, but it, you can use, you can avoid the long animation to start uh, if you just use it normally which is shift and, and right click you can see there's a huge a uh, very long animation at the beginning there before you even start to charge and you can release it and this in english this skill is called lotharagon's call but uh, you can actually there are actually several ways that you can cancel that long animation and one way of doing that is by using your right click skill if you aim in it real quick you do the skill the shift in in right click you can see here that it, it goes off and you can see it went on cool down here and now you also get the 10 the 10 ap buff of that the aiming down sight skill so yeah so that's one way you can cancel the animation the other way is to use your shift e which is this skill over here and it, it always shoots two volleys of arrows if you do one time like this so after the second one you can just hold your shift and right click and it will release that skill again without that slow animation if you want to charge you can still do that but you're gonna have you no know, then you're gonna have to actually go through a little bit of the animation there and the only way to cancel is to use a skill that we haven't talked about it yet which is shift and which is forward so w and e uh, and at the very end you can uh use the skill in there like this like that you just sort right there you gotta tap your shift and right click at the end of the skill we'll do one more time here so forward one two three four and then like this my this one this skill you're going to be using as often as possible does pretty good damage and you can cancel the animation so you pretty much just count this as a flow the other way you can uh, cancel the animation is if you do your your four, shift and w if you do that you can do this and click click your shift and right click quickly and you can see that that the skill came off right like that so just add this skill the end of pretty much everything that you can there might be other ways that, I don't, that i'm forgetting right now but if you know other ones i forgot to show that i don't know yet uh, feel free to share them in the comments down below your archer trick so this one is the next one we're going to talk about here is the shift e which i showed you a little bit ago here it may seem like a good skill for clearing big areas so could, because of the arch so you can see there's the, the four guys there you, you might want to i think it might be good to you hit like this but as you can see you're missing every single arrow pretty much except for maybe that one. Oh, i hit one now use this skill more as a shotgun skill you know you, you want to jump into near where the mobs are once you get close to them then you can you can use them because then more arrows will hit uh more mobs uh that's that skill and like i said you can use uh the shift and right click after so one more time use the boom boom and then you can use this all right next skill here is called uproot i didn't really use this doing grinding i just took it because i had extra skill points and it looks like this another back flip uh i didn't use it because i had enough back flips but like i said if you get into the thing where you keep going uh back positioning to, to get the other mobs right uh you can uh use the skill to get move around the field and get propel you to the next mobs the effects really are not great you got seven times one thousand 203 percent damage here actually no it's uh another four after that so the damage seems pretty good but there's no crit percent at all so like i said I, did, I didn't take it because there's too many jump too many back flips and i had i had enough back flips but if you really get into the range the archer and you get the movement down the flipping back moving down to reposition you to get to the next mob the, you go you go back pretty far you jump back pretty far so it might be great for mobility this is optional for sure uh this one is the other charge that we talked about earlier that you don't have to charge if you have your awakening buff uh damages arrive five times 
1570%, crit, super armor while you're, you're charging, so that's pretty decent. Uh, and this skill in English is called Piercing Light, and let me show you again what it looks like here. So this is back in E. And then you can shoot it. The range is awesome. You see, you hit the guy over there with the explosion of the arrow. So that's the main skills here, for at least the, the main section here. On the side here, you have this flow here, which is a continuation of another skill. This one you're going to use all the time too. It's telling you to use with this F skill here. So if you hold F, it will do three attacks. One, two, and then charge the one at the end. Uh, this is the third attack. So it's pretty much a three stage attack. The first one is the, is the sweep here, which is called low sweep. And then the second part of the attack is called lights trail. And then the, the final step is called righteous smite. Right, and let's show you one more time here. So if you just hold F, the whole combo comes out. Hello, Mr. Berserker. Get out of my face. I'm trying to uh, make a YouTube video here. All right, so that, those three skills, these three skills here are pretty much one uh, and, uh, one package here. Uh, but these actually also combo out of other skills. For example, this one is your forward and right click, which is called Glissade. And it's, it goes like this. And you can see here that if you continue this skill, which just by holding a right click, it did the last two attacks, right? So it does also combo your Light's Trail and your Righteous Smite. But of course, every time, every step of the way, you're moving farther and farther back. So there's one. So here's Light's Trail and then here's Righteous Smite. So again, mobility is going to be, uh, or positioning is going to be very important for your ability to grind efficiently. Imagine if your next pack of mob was all the way over there on those rocks and now I'm so f much farther away. Instead of being right here, right now I am back there. And now I have to run all the way back here and go past that. So ideally, like I said, you want to you'd be wanting to use your comet drive to go behind your enemy, then use your shift Q, and then the other direction. Not like I just did right now, but as I showed you before, then it can be here, and then you can start doing this. You can start going back and back, and maybe then do one of these. Right, and now you're here right and the next group of mobs that's most of the skills right here uh and uh, the combo with this one is mostly how i use these skills I don't, I don't really use this f i could actually just cancel this one but i'll leave it there because again i don't need skill points for anything the last skill i already showed you is the forward and e which gives you those punches in the face and a stab punches of course with your bow so boom 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 and then you can use your right click and there the end. Get out of here, Mr. Zerker. Uh, this is my dummy. Go be dummy somewhere else. Uh, that's... Uh, well, let me find you here my other skill add-on so we can talk about it. So the next skill add-on that I have is for uh, this skill here, which is your Glissade. And I put another monster AP there, 20 monster AP and 5 seconds of attack speed. Actually, often what I do is I will start with the Glissade and then I'll combo into this skill here. The forward and, and E and then I'll finish like that. And now I'm here and I can get my my meteor dive to be on the other side and then I can reposition to be able to do the mobs there. I don't usually play ranged classes so positioning is not, not this kind of positioning is not something that I'm used to doing but so that's why I usually use my glissade and then this this and then I can do this and shift Q and do this and then we can start again. You can actually now now this is on cooldown again so we can actually do this and now you're here right so Keep that in mind, just giving you some options here of how you can do. The other thing, of course, you can do too, as after you you do this, you can do Shift and E, and then do your this, and this, and now you can continue. You know, just an extension, instead of going straight from Ra Ravenous Talon into your Loot Dragon's Call, you can put uh, Full Bloom, which is your Shift E in the middle of the two, just to extend the combo a little bit more. And since you're going to be on the target's face, you're going to be very close to them, right? The full bloom here will hit them a lot, a lot more arrows than it would otherwise. Oh yeah, so I put it, I put this last skill add-on here on Piercing Light, just because it was a very powerful skill add-on. But the problem, of course, is that this skill has a 23 second cooldown at max, and the buffs are only 8 and 5 seconds respectively. Uh, the first buff is 30 monster AP, and the second buff is a 15 PvP AP. Ideally, if you want to engage in PvP, right, you can pop your Q buff, and then you can use this skill instantly to get that 15 uh, PvP damage. Or if you're going to find some kind of hard elite, you can do the same, but 
but then now you're going to have your, your 30 AP against monsters, right? So this also knocked down and a stiff, right? So it's probably a decent way to start a PvP engagement. Again, this is not a PvP guide, but uh, this combo here might be a good way to start. But now let's talk, last thing I'm thinking we have to talk about here is the raw bomb choices uh there are no real good raw bomb choices i didn't like either of the skills here i ended up taking this one here which in english is called deadly explosion uh no real good reason why i took it i, I don't really have any suggestions for raw bomb just take the whatever one you find better uh the first this one here that i choose throws you back a little bit the animation is kind of long it has a kind of a good arc of aoe there uh, the other one I think is a little more, I'll show the animation here, the other one I think is less of an AoE, is more of a single target perhaps, but both animations are pretty slow, and the other one that I took was Verger Clout, I took this one because the other one is is uh, Ensnare, which is uh, just part of an Ensnare, which is going to be a, a pull, and as, as I showed you before, the pulls, the range of the pull is not very doesn't go very far, so it was kind of useless, this one at least, uh, you charge towards the enemy, so a little bit, so it's a a way to get closer so, but as you saw the animation is also pretty slow so that's i believe all all that we have to say here it's all that i have to say anyways about the archer keep your buffs active at all times again pre-awakening shift kill buff which is this one here is one buff that you can keep up at all times then this one here monster damage buff and then you right click another buff that you can get at all times all right keep those going uh and any other buffs that you might find and keep canceling your loot dragon skills as many, as many times as you can. Actually, for crystals, let me let me change characters real quick. Let me show you what I have on my Valkyrie because that's pretty much what crystals I would recommend for you guys, anyways. All right, so here we are, my Valkyrie. Uh, let's see. So keep in mind that this is PVE build, right? I don't have any precision crystals of any sort because I don't PVP really. I PVP only on occasion with my guild and old wars. For my gloves, for example, I got the gloves that give me AP and plus two crit and so i get five ap i think i don't know what this is called in english plus two crit each and plus five ap and just with two of these already a plus four crits are almost maxed out at crit and then for your chest here uh just get the ones that give you dam damage reduction uh these are well, i have the the one uh cabelius uh, but any cabelius whatever you're, you're able to afford i know prioritize there you can choose between more if you want more weight for more damage reduction or more health. If you want a PvE, maybe the weight is the most important so you can grind for longer periods of time without worrying about that. Then for my head crystals here, I would recommend you putting XP crystals, of course. I definitely put those in there while you're leveling up. Uh, once you finish leveling up the archer, you'll probably already know uh, what kind of crystals you should be looking into that. And for my boots, for my Urgons here, I have a Black Magic Crystal Histria that gives me some uh, movement speed plus one each, so I get plus two. Uh, the other two stats that I get from this Histria Crystal is the weight. If you're gonna PvE, I would definitely recommend you to get weight. And the other one is stamina. If you're gonna PvP, stamina is probably better for you. An archer actually because the archer goes through a lot of stamina when you're grinding so you might want to use uh you might want to get a crystal for your boots that gives you more stamina right, and then for your main for your offhand chris i'll, I'll stick with your 10 percent crit crystals and then for my main hand i just have the plus five attack speed attack uh sorry attack power ap crystals uh just because i'm cheap uh if i if i were to invest more money i would probably get the ones that give you some accuracy uh, they're pretty expensive though uh this one is the one that a lot of people recommend especially if you want a pvp uh el caro el caro el car crystals yes i believe it's so called in english and they will give you of course your 12 accuracy each and ignore resistance so for pvp you should definitely get the el car crystals if you're not going to pvp save your money and just get the uh, 5 ap crystals so yeah that's it for crystals Let's switch back here to Swaz. We're back here with Swaz uh, in Olvia, but I think that's going to be it here for me. Uh, if you've been playing Archer and you want to share some of your tips and tricks and secrets on how to improve Archer, uh, feel free to post in the comments down below. Oh, look, my guild, so pretty. We took over Sarah Balanus. Uh, but yeah, so if you liked the video and thought it was informative, I'd appreciate it if you can hit the like, the like button. And if you want to see more video content from me, don't forget to subscribe. And also come join the Discord community and our stream on Twitch. Links down below. And that's going to be it for me for now. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday for the patch notes video. All right. Take care.